Information, please. Uh, will you kindly tell me the date? November 21st, 1938. You're sure of that? Well, time certainly does fly, doesn't it? Uh, thanks very much. Don't go, Meadows. Oh, pardon, sir. Uh, I didn't know you were awake. Your uh, name is Meadows, I take it? Uh, no, sir. It's Grayson, sir, of course. Oh. Grayson? Well, I believe I like that even better than uh, Meadows. Are you quite all right, sir? Now, Grayson, the thing for you to do is not lose your head. Now, don't fly into a panic or anything. I'm simply going to ask you a few questions. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, sit down. Sit down, sir. Yes. You have sat down some time or other, haven't you? Oh, uh, yes, sir. All right. Sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, the first question, Grayson. Where are we? We're at Briarmore, sir. Your country place at Long Island. You mean to say I own this place? Are you sure you're quite all now, right, Grayson, sir? Grayson, don't worry about me. Just answer my question. For instance, how long have you been in my employ? Oh, quite a while, sir. It, it, will, it will be five years next month. Well, tell me, Grayson, how am I to work for it? Oh, I've been quite happy in serving you, sir. You're all right, Grayson. I don't know how you are with anyone else, but you're all right with me. Oh, thank you, sir. Not at all. Uh, tell me, Grayson. Who else is here with us at uh, Briar Moor, I think you said? Oh, just your wife, sir. Oh, then I'm a married man, Grayson. Oh, yes, sir. And Mrs. Weddington is a very charming lady, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's some consolation, at least. Anyone else? Just your secretary, sir. Oh, I made a secretary to write. Yes, he came down from the city this afternoon just to see how you were doing. Uh, yes, sir. As to your health. I never felt better in my life. Uh, of course, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, will you uh, need anything else, sir? No, that's all. You can go. Grayson, well, whatever your name is, we'll start all over again. I'm not a victim of aphasia or amnesia either. And this is not 1938. And the reason I know it's still 1934 is because of this. You see that? I nicked myself on the train this morning while shaving. And a tiny cut like that wouldn't last for four years, would it? Well, would it? Uh, no, sir. But you spoke about a train. I did. The train I arrived on this morning from Florida. Oh, but they told me that you had been ill and hadn't left the house for months. Oh, so that's the story, is it? Look here, Grayson, you see that arm? A man wouldn't sunburn in midwinter like that except in Florida or California, would he? Well, what's the answer? Oh, I, I don't quite know, sir. You don't quite know? Well, you, you see, sir, I'm a character actor, sir. You're a what? A character actor on the stage, sir. No. A call came to the agency this morning 
asking for an actor to play a high-class butler. And at which, if I might say so, I'm very good. So, as times are now, I took it. Then what did you do? I came over here, and they explained the situation to me. Oh. Huh. Well, what was that? Oh, they told me how to answer any such questions as you might ask. They explained that you were quite a rich man, but sort of given to uh, what you might call... Uh, Hallucinations? They didn't call it that, sir. Uh, they just intimated that you lapsed a bit, uh, uh, mentally. Hmm. Well, perhaps they're right. I certainly lapsed for a few hours after I stepped into that taxi that's supposed to be empty. I don't remember a thing until I came to on that couch. Then you were drugged, sir. Apparently. But they told me that everything was absolutely legitimate. Who were they? The lady who was supposed to be your wife and your secretary. What's his name? Uh, Colton Drain. Is he the man who engaged you? You know, Grayson, this is very interesting. Uh, what were they going to pay you? Oh, uh, they promised 200 for the job. Oh, you're worth more, Grayson. I'm sure you'll be glad to know that your salary's been raised. You get an extra 200 from me. And I don't believe the job will take very long. Uh, meaning what, sir? Meaning simply that I can't pretend to be a victim of amnesia for more than a few hours at a time. My ego won't permit it. Oh, I don't quite follow, sir. You better, Grayson. That's what I'm paying you for. You've got to stick with me. Oh, I think I'd better be going. You better not, Grayson. You know what will happen to you if I call the police. No, sir. You'd go to jail as an accomplice in a kidnapping plot. Oh, oh, but you wouldn't accuse me of that, sir. Well, it all depends on you, Grayson. Oh, very well, then. I'll stick. Good. Hello, dear. You may go, Grayson. We'll have cocktails later. Oh, very good, madam. Feel better after your nap, dear? Is your headache all gone? Oh, uh, my headache. Uh, <coughs> I've forgotten all about that. I'm sure if you rub my head, dear, it will vanish completely. Oh, it's marvelous. What's marvelous? Everything. Oh, being here with you and all that sort of thing. To think we've been married all this time and never once had an unhappy moment. How long has it been? Oh, what a silly question. You know, I could never remember exactly. It will be five years this coming month. Hmm. Five years. Why, it seems as if we just met. I wonder what time it is. Oh, it's always the right time for love, dear. Say, that's pretty sentiment, isn't it? Well, I order dinner for 7.30. Oh, I hope no one disturbs us tonight. Because I wanted to vote the entire evening just to you. Isn't it wonderful to be together again? Now, is that nice? Why, dearest, why so distant? I warn you to keep away. Oh, aren't you happy to have me here? If you only knew how I've been looking forward to this moment. Now, what use could you possibly have for a dead husband? If you go any further, you'll never find out. Well, I'll never find out if I don't. any privacy in this house for husband and wife? This farce has gone far enough. But you would have found out if that gun had been loaded. Isn't it? Why, Colton, you told me it wasn't loaded. I didn't think it was. Famous last words. My dear, please sit down. Spain. Now, Mr. Drain, will you kindly explain why you picked me to impersonate the owner of this rather charming or rather pleasant estate? I happened to be at the hotel when you arrived this morning. You look so much like Jerome Warrenden, I can hardly believe my eyes. Oh. 
And to convince yourself that I wasn't wearing them, you had me drunk and kidnapped, huh? Drunk? Why, Colton, you didn't tell me that. I never would have been a party to a kidnapping. Well, you're a party to one now, so all you can do is go through with it. Go through with what? I'll tell you. We had hoped we might be able to convince you that you really were Jerome Wyrandon. Oh. And you thought I'd be so thrilled at being this charming lady's husband that I'd go on pretending to be some chap of whom I never heard, huh? Oh, I admit it sounds a bit fantastic. But now that you're here, how would you like to stay? For love or money? Money. I'm sorry, I hope you'd say uh, love. Much money? $1,000 a minute. Many minutes? About 10. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just received $200,000 in bonds from Gordon Lewis, the trustee of the Werndon Estate. It's quite all right. You see, I'm really Mrs. Werndon. Are you sure? I've already phoned Mr. Lewis. He's on his way here now. Oh, he was certainly sure I'd fall for your scheme. We were. Suppose I refuse. Then you'll be arrested for trying to impersonate Jerome Werndon. And Mrs. Werndon will corroborate my charge. Hmm, now that is really ingenious. Might cause me uh, considerable embarrassment at that. And after all, I could never forgive myself if I caused such a charming lady to perjure herself. So, therefore, I accept your offer of $10,000 for whatever service I can render you. Fine. And now, my dear, will you uh, please ring for Grayson? I could never receive a guest at this hour in my present attire. Isn't there anything more I should know about myself, like some trick mannerism or things of that sort? Yes, uh, just call uh, Mr. Lewis Colonel and uh, treat him very casually. You see, you've been abroad for a number of years, and he hasn't seen you. Delightful. I can imagine how wonderful it was with you. Was it our honeymoon? Uh, you rang, madam. Yes, Grayson. Please show Mr. Warrington to his room and uh, lay out his dinner clothes. I shan't be long, my dear. I regret every moment apart from you. You go upstairs, Grace, and I'll join you in just a moment, and we'll talk over the second act. The second act? Then I must have missed the first curtain. But you haven't missed the big situation yet, which may develop any moment now that the introductions are over. I think I should make my exit. No, you don't, Grayson. You've got to stick with me. Oh, very good, sir. We never should have started this, I'm afraid. Well, nonsense. It's turning out even better than I'd hoped. You know, I'm a pretty good judge of men. When I checked on him at the hotel and found out he had no friends in town, no business associates or things of that sort, I concluded he must be hiding out and wouldn't turn down any chance to make big money as easily as this. You're pretty clever, aren't you? Well, I hope I'm clever enough to get away with this little deal. And then with you. You don't. Please. Why not? You still thinking of Jerry? Only until we get the bonds. Then I'll forget him forever. You mean a lot to me, Chloe. I understand how all this is affecting you. But tomorrow, when we're on our way to South America, all our troubles will be over. I hope so. That's the situation, Grayson. <laughs> Rather amusing, isn't it, huh? I'm afraid it's a mistake, sir. Why should we jeopardize our safety? Well, because uh, I feel sorry for young Warrington. First of all, he's about to lose his wife, who's charming, in spite of the fact that she's mercenary. Now it looks as if he's going to lose his fortune as well. Besides, I don't like drain. Nor I. No. 
Of course you don't. Grayson? <laughs> you don't like the way he combs his hair, do you? Mm -hmm. That's partly it, of course, sir. But that's not the reason entirely. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, am I satisfactory? Hmm? Perfect, sir. Grayson, you're not an actor. You're just a butler at heart. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, you can go now, Grayson. Very good, sir. Now, you have your instructions. Oh, yes, sir. Manhattan 46220. Oh. Manhattan 46220. Oh. Oh. Yes. Now I'll give you the word. Mr. Lewis. Good evening, Colonel. Oh, Drain, how are you? <laughs> so glad to see you. It's been far too long. Oh, thank you, my dear. That alone more than repays me for my trip. It was a terrible night to ask you to come out, Colonel, but uh, you know Jerry's whims. Mm. Had it been anyone else, I should have disregarded the request. When do you arrive? Why, uh... On the uh, Baron Garrier this afternoon. Oh. oh, he must be dressed by now. Colton, we mustn't keep Colonel Lewis waiting. I'll tell him you're here, Colonel. Thank you. Cocktail, Colonel? Thanks. Frankly, I'm rather surprised Jerry didn't cable me direct on a matter of this importance. Oh, you should have gotten over being surprised at anything that Jerry does. Even I can never keep track of him. I understand. Nobody could understand what I went through. I couldn't even count on him for dinner. With guests waiting, I'd get a wire or a cable. He'd be in his plane somewhere, and I'd... Well, I'd be forgotten. Well, that's why I was surprised when I saw you here tonight. Well, let's not talk about it, please. Now, understand. Lewis has with him $200,000 in bonds, which he says represents practically the last of your estate, which you cabled me to have him deliver here. Now, just treat the situation casually. You're used to big money. And as soon as you get the bonds, hand them over to me for safekeeping. Understand? When it comes to money, Mr. Drain, I can understand anything. Then don't try any tricks. Your obedient servant. Hello, Colonel. I'm glad to see you. Oh, thanks, Jerry. I'm glad to see you, too. Thank you. And you're looking great. Europe seems to have agreed with you. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, home is the best place, after all. Then you mean to settle down? Well, that's certainly what I'd like to do. Uh, I'm glad to hear it, my boy. Well, now to business. You know, I almost failed to get here with these. Yes, sir? Yes. A car almost ran us off the road. You don't think it was a holdup? No, no, I don't think so. The other driver may have been drunk, but it gave me a thrill, though. <laughs> that wouldn't mean anything to you, Jerry. You flyers are accustomed to thrills. Oh, by the way, uh, what kind of a ship are you flying now? Same old ship, isn't it, Jerry? Uh, yes, same old ship. Oh, I see. Well, here we are, Jerry. In compliance with your wishes, as communicated to me by Mr. Drain, I brought you certain bonds. They amount to $200,000. That's uh, what you wanted, isn't it? Uh, yes, Colonel, it is. Of course you realize this constitutes practically the entire remains of your fortune. Mm, you might say my misfortune, Colonel. Well, perhaps so, Jerry. But let us hope you make better use of it than you did the balance of your estate. You know, that's exactly what I've been thinking. How I could put these bonds to the best use. Well, aren't you going to count them? No, Colonel. Your word's as good as your bond. Well, thank you, Jerry. In that case, our transaction is almost completed. In fact, that almost completes my work connected with the estate. So I hope you won't mind, uh, as a mere formality, uh, giving me a receipt. Uh, no, Colonel, uh, not at all. Uh, have your receipt made up? I have the form. May I have the pen? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, there you are. Seems to be a lot of money, Colonel. It 
does indeed, my boy. Hey, what? I'd be very careful with those bombs, Jerry. I think you'd better put them in your safe. Oh, that won't be necessary, Jerry. I'll take care of them till tomorrow. Oh, I agree with the Colonel. They're negotiable, aren't they? They are. And they certainly should be put in safe places. Well, uh, you open it, Mr. Drain. Sorry, but I uh, never knew the combination. How about you, dear? Surely you remember. Why, no, dear. Uh, you had a change the winter before you went to Europe, when I was in Palm Beach. Hmm, well, I'll try to remember, but I haven't been myself lately. Which only proves that modern husbands make them stealing anything from their wives. Why, it's unlocked. And empty. <clears throat> but it's neither empty or I'm not now. After this, dear, I shall share all my secrets with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be getting back to town. Well, certainly, Colonel. I'll have your car brought around. Thank you. Oh, but surely, Colonel, you're not going to rush back on a night like this. I really think I should. But Chloe had planned on you for dinner, hadn't you, dear? Uh, why, yes. But if the Colonel feels he must go... Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. And he wouldn't disappoint you, would you, Colonel? Why, no. No, of course not. Well, then it's all settled. I insist, too. <laughs> you know, Colonel, this is splendid. We can have a reunion and uh, talk over old times and all that sort of thing. Hmm? Uh, you rang, sir. Uh, yes, Grayson. Colonel Lewis is staying for dinner. That will be four. Oh, very good, sir. We should have some good vintage, something uh, special for the occasion. You'll pardon me, Colonel, while I talk it over with Grayson. He knows more about my uh, cellar than I do myself. How is this? I'm afraid that Mr. Drain isn't capable as the villain, and I may have to remove him from the castle. Manhattan, sir? No, no, not yet. I'm not quite sure. But stick close. It may happen any moment now. Very good, sir. Oh, oh Colonel. Mr. Drain, will you show Colonel Lewis to a guest room and assist him in any way you can? Certainly. It would be a pleasure. Well, I don't want to be a bother. I... Nonsense, Colonel. You're welcome to stay as long as you want, isn't he, dear? Why, yes, of course. Thank you. No, oh dear, I'm just beginning to appreciate what a true friend Colonel Lewis is. Well, you got away with it, didn't you? Did I? Of course. I wonder. Why do you say that? Don't you think the Colonel accepted your signature? Oh, but he did. Gladly. Wasn't it good? Perfect. How do you know? I copied the signature from his picture on the desk. Oh, I should have thought of that myself. Now that it's all over, why are you stay? I have a guest, the Colonel. Then why did you ask him to stay? Well, I'm the host. You wouldn't want your husband to be rude, would you? Tell me, uh, do I look so much like your husband that anyone would be uh, deceived? Almost anyone. But there is a difference that I myself have noticed. Thank you. I like flattery. Where is he now? Your husband? Well, the last I heard of him, he was wandering about southern France. Oh, but that was months ago. What difference does it make? Oh, no difference. Except that... Wherever he is, I wouldn't change places with him uh, right now. You know, you're really a very accomplished person. Even more, you're clever. I kiss your hand, madame. But that doesn't explain how you knew the location of that safe. Anytime a picture's so poorly placed, it must be to conceal something. Oh, really, you're a marvel. My dear, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you and Jerry together again. Why don't you and Jerry make another attempt? Drop your divorce proceedings and start over once more. I 
appreciate your motives, Colonel, but it's quite impossible. Barry and I have definitely agreed to separate. As a matter of fact, it's quite possible that he'll be leaving here tonight. Well, I did say something of that sort earlier, but since then I've changed my mind. But why? Oh, the Colonel's made me see things in a different light. In what way? Well, things look brighter. I understand things more clearly now. I never before realized what a divorce would mean. Why, it might change the whole course of my life. I doubt it. Well, that remains to be seen. I'm already a far different man from the sort you know. You know it's served, madam. Oh, dear. May I have the honor? Take it easy, pal. You'll save yourself a hospital bill. Come on out from behind there. Make it snappy before I start blasting. Chloe, what are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. Although it's hardly necessary. Well, uh, at any rate, these guests seem to take precedence. Yeah, and we'll take what's in that safe, too. So the sooner you open it up, the sooner you can get back to bed. I don't know the combination. Why were you trying to open it, then? Well, I, uh, I heard a noise, and I came downstairs to investigate. I, I thought someone might be tampering with it. You'd better start tampering with it yourself. That's the idea. And the quicker you do, the less chance there is of my tampering with this. Well, I can't open it, I tell you. I... I've tried the only combination I could think of. You better think of another one. Oh, I can't. He's telling the truth. It's my husband's private safe, and he's the only one who really knows the combination. Yeah, and I suppose your husband's in China. No, the lady's husband's not in China. It's the sparrow. Hiya, Chuck. Say, who was this mug? The sparrow, the best cracksman in the game. You must have heard of him. So oh, that's what you are, a common crook. And these men are your accomplices. Well, thanks for the compliment, lady, but I don't claim to be in his class. Say, there's one thing about this I don't get. Why are we two small timers on the job when the Sparrow's here? Maybe it was to provide jobs for the unemployed. Yeah. Say, I thought there was something phony about this whole deal when I got the tip off. Must have been a hot one. Short was in the bay. I don't know anything about that guy or the blonde dame there. Come here. I'll give you a near fall. Say, this 
See, that let me catch him the last car in the milk train. Well, to avoid professional uh, competition, Chuck, I'll give your friend here a break. Open it up, if you can. You think I can't? Watch me. Why, it's an old Barton Dow. I used to play with these things in my crib. It's empty. Bonds are gone. Yes, and you're the one that took them. Really, Mr. Drain, it's a sign of ill breeding to lose your temper like that. Besides, the proof is lacking. Like Just the same, you took them, you crook. Even admitting I'm a crook, your conclusions are too hastily drawn. There's at least one other crook in this room besides the gentleman present. Do you mean to imply by that that I... No, dear, I'm not referring to you, I assure you. Hey, hey, lay off the arguments, will you? I want to know is who's going to take care of us. Sorry, you can't stay to find out. That sounds like a police car to me. Come on, let's land. Ain't you coming, Chief? No, I can't desert my friends. Go on, hurry up. Now, you better let me handle this situation. And why not? The police are evidently well known to you. Well, you'll get to know them much better yourself. Some gentlemen to see you, sir. I'm uh, Sergeant Carrigan from the local station. Someone phoned in and asked us to send some officers to the Warrenden home. This is the place, isn't it? Why, yes, it is. Uh, I am Mr. Warrenden, and uh, this is Mrs. Warrenden. Well, who committed the robbery? Huh? Robbery? Why, there's been no robbery. And who phoned for the police? I did. Oh, you did? Well, what's the idea? Sergeant? Have you ever heard of a notorious crook called the Sparrow? Yes, we've heard of him, but we've never seen him. There he is. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you. What's the racket this time? I'll tell you, Sergeant. This man came here posing as Jerome Warrenden. By a strange coincidence, they resemble each other so remarkable that even I, Mr. Warrenden's secretary, was deceived until I caught him robbing that safe. There were $200,000 in bonds in that safe. Well, he never was a piker. Come on, Sparrow, where's the stuff? I, I don't know what you mean. I, I must be the victim of a plot. Dear, will you kindly tell this officer that I'm your husband? Well, what about it, lady? Mr. Drain told you the truth. I never saw this man before this afternoon. That settles it. The lady ought to know her own husband. I only wanted to make certain. Come on now, where are those bonds? Uh, just a moment, officer. I can't understand why my wife has taken this means of denying me, unless it's because she's conspiring with my secretary to embezzle my bonds. I assure you, you're making a grave mistake. Now don't worry about me. I don't make mistakes. Grayson, now here is my bond. I'll handle this if you don't mind. Come here. What's your name? Uh, Grayson, sir. How long have you worked here? Oh, I've been serving Mr. Warrington going on five years this next month. Five years? Yes, sir. You couldn't be mistaken in knowing him. In knowing Mr. Warrington? Oh, gracious. How absurd. Say, what kind of a game is this? Just another fraud, Sergeant. This butler has but recently been engaged. He's probably an accomplice of his. Oh, Mr. Drain. Sir, why you yourself now, tell me why this Take it easy. Why, take it easy. Hey, what's the excitement? This is Mr. Lewis. He can substantiate our charge. I'm sorry to inform you, Colonel. Now, Colonel, wait a minute. You wanted a detective to make an investigation. Well, I'm that detective, and I'm going to do it, or else we'll all go down to headquarters and talk it out there. All right, Mr. Lewis. What have you got to say? I am trustee of the Warrington Estate. I came here tonight to deliver a large amount of money in bonds to Mr. Warrington. And you gave them to him? Why, certainly, why not? How long have you known him? Jerry Warrington? I should say at least 20 years. And you couldn't be mistaken as to his identity? Why, why impossible. I have Jerry's receipt for the transfer here. I'm thoroughly familiar 
with his signature. And uh, you'd swear to that? Decidedly. Say, what are we playing? Ring around the rosy? This lady says it's not her husband. You say it is. The secretary says it ain't. The butler says it is. Ah. Say, if this is a practical joke, it's not going to turn out to be so funny. That's ridiculous, Sergeant. Colonel Lewis, you've been the victim of a plot. The receipt you have is a forgery. Oh, but where are the bonds? I'm responsible for those. And if this is not Jerry Warrington, think of my position. You're not to blame, Colonel. He even temporarily deceived me. But where are the bonds? We'll get the bonds. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Warrington, we're going to take a little trip to headquarters. Oh, you can. Oh, yes, I can. This seems to be a family affair. That's I'm a... not going to take the responsibility of making the charges. That's an admirable suggestion, Sergeant. I feel my wife would be much safer in the arms of the law than uh, here with my secretary. Mac, stick along with the lady. Right. Bert, see that Mr. Warrenden gets his coat. Okay. Colonel, I'm sorry our little visit was so rudely interrupted. We have so much in common, I... Uh... No, I don't think so. I, I've never had such a terrible experience. I'll return your call as soon as this little unfortunate matter is cleared up. Where are you going, Mr. Lewis? Well, I think I'd better get to town and report the disappearance of the bombs. I can find you when I want you. Certainly. At this address. Don't worry, Chloe. The bonds must still be in the house. And if they are, I'll find them. Consideration overwhelms me, Colton. But my mind will never be entirely at ease while you and the bonds are still here. I'm ready, officer. I believe you, my dear. All right, I'm in a hurry. Let's get going. Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, pardon me. <clears throat> I hope everything will be all right, sir. It's a pleasure in serving you. Thank you, Grayson. Sorry, you can't come with me. Yes, sir. Hmm? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> this should uh, take care of the temporary emergencies until I get back. Very good, sir. the idea of identifying that crook as Warrenden. Oh, you gave me the lines yourself, sir. I'm a very good study, and I never forget a cue. Then suppose you try remembering where those bonds are. Surely you don't suspect that I... Why, I've never stolen a thing in my life, except possibly a, a towel from the Pullman Company. Now listen, Grayson, I want... That'll be all for the present, Grayson. Oh, you're going back to town, Colonel? I thought it best under the circumstances. I'll order your car. No, 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 never mind. I'll attend to it. But I'm deeply concerned over the disappearance of those bonds. You may depend. I'll search the house thoroughly. You appreciate my position. I turned over those bonds in good faith. You were a witness to the receipt. Certainly, and you can count on my support if necessary. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Colonel. Evening. What's good about it? Cup of coffee. Two. Make it snappy. Sure. So there ain't no use you getting tough about it. Now I'm telling you. Ah, you... you're telling me. You pass up 200 G's just because you're afraid of some big shot. Well, the Sparrow's a white guy. We'll get our cut all right. Why should we cut with anyone? Once we had them bonds in our hands, it was ours, wasn't they? Gee, that's right. Never thought of that. Oh. You never thought of it. You just let this dicky bird guy kick the whole works right in the pants, that's all. Hey, how's about that coffee?
give me out of game time. I'm Captain Hayes of the district station. We had a call from here. Well, you're a bit late, Captain. Your, uh, your other detail beat you to it. What other detail? Well, Sergeant Kerrigan. There's no other detail working out of our station tonight. And there's no sergeant by the name of Kerrigan. What? Well, what? There were $200,000 in bonds stolen here tonight by a crook named the Sparrow. Sparrow? And you let him get away? Well, the police came and, and Sergeant Kerrigan... There are his pals. He's pulled that stunt before when he was in a tight spot. And if he's escaped, the bonds are with him. We've got to work fast. We'll send out a radio broadcast. We may catch him before he gets off the island. Where's your phone? Right this way, Captain. Well, excuse me, officer, but I... Wait a minute. Well, you are clever. Is abduction another one of your accomplishments? Well, I'm simply returning your charming hospitality, uh, minus the blackjack. You know that still hurts? You succeeded admirably. Hmm. Well, uh, allow me. No, thank you. I simply wanted to make you feel at home. Well, can I offer you Nothing, anything? Nothing, thank you. The lady will have uh, champagne and sandwiches. Sit down. Well, Mr. Sparrow, what's your next move? Why did you bring me here? Well, as your husband, I feel entitled to the advantages that such a pleasant prospect conjures in my alert imagination, if you know what I mean. Yes, coming from you, I know exactly what you mean. Well, you're wrong. I'm not at all intrigued by a woman like you. Oh, you're beautiful, I'll admit, but you're dumb and dishonest. And that lets me out. Well, that's your opinion. And more. I had hoped that there's some excuse for your picking up with a voucher-like drain and knifing your husband in the bag and robbing him blind. I pity him, the poor devil. Oh, I'm not wearing any medals for honesty, but I draw the line at that. Have you finished? Mm, quite, unless I have made myself clear. Oh, I understand you. But now I want you to listen to me. This husband you say I'm knifing in the back, this poor devil whom you pity, is the very one in whose interest I'm doing all this. Hmm. Oh, you can sneer if you like. I was only trying to salvage part of the wreck of his fortune for him. The love I once felt for him is dead. But even though he treated me like a dog, there is still a remembrance of what he once was. And how much he needs my help now. And so you got drained to help you, huh? Hmm. Now come again, dear. I can't buy that. Well, nevertheless, it's the truth. Drain has systematically robbed Jerry for years. He's so terribly dishonest, he thinks everyone else is. That's why I pretended to play into his hands, so that I could get the remainder of the estate and put it in a trust fund for Jerry when he needed it. At the rate he's going, he's bound to need it soon. Oh, well, Mr. Drain was perfectly willing, particularly when he thought he was going to get me as part of the bargain. Uh, I noticed that, too. So you were going to put this money in trust for your husband? His husband, whom you claim treated you like a dog? Yes. Then what were you going to do? Get a job, work, anything. Forget about it. Oh, it's useless. I know what you're thinking. What? You don't believe me. No, you don't know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking? I think you're pretty swell. And this husband of yours must be an awful sap. I'd give anything if I hadn't gone into this. No, there's where you make a mistake. The luckiest thing you ever did is when you met me. Then you'll help me? Mm-hmm. And the bonds? I think I can get the bonds, too. And I'll see that this fellow Drain doesn't get quite everything he expected. Well, pardon me, dear. Oh, come in, Mac. Excuse me for butting in, Chief. I thought you'd want to know he's here. Bring him in. I'm sorry, dear. Business, uh, would you mind stepping in the next room? Oh, no, not at all. 
And uh, leave the door slightly ajar. You may hear something interesting. Knowing why you brought me here. All right, Even an officer has the right to take a man out of his car no, on the sorry, public no, highway no, without, a, without a warrant. You're going I to be... All oh, right. I'll... Whose place is this? It's mine, Colonel. Allow me to welcome you. Oh, yes, Pancho. Bring him right over here. And then you can go. Yes, sir. Very glad to see you again, Colonel. I'm sorry I couldn't return your last call. You did very well tonight, Kerrigan. Even the police force would have been proud of you. Thanks, Chief. I try to do it better each time, but I was awful nervous tonight. Nervous? Why? Didn't you hear that mug drain say he'd phone for the real cops? Isn't he a policeman? Oh, I wouldn't even suggest such a thing, Colonel. Kerrigan's very sensitive. Oh, I apologize. Oh, it's all right. Pour yourself a drink. I won't offer you any, Colonel, because I know you're easily tempted. Well, I'm... I'm all confused. I'd like to know why you or, or your men brought me here. Well, you have something I want. What? Will you please give me this? Well, why? There's nothing in it. <laughs> you wouldn't fool me, would you, Colonel? How did those get in there? A little bird put them in, Colonel. Sparrow. Now, will you kindly give me the receipt? No, 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 no. I, I, I couldn't do that. That's all I've got to show. Why, I might be accused of being a, a member of the plot. And I, 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 uh, it would ruin me. Nonsense, Colonel. I've been accused of much worse. And I'm not ruined. Oh. Come on! Down, Colonel. Colonel, I'm not in the habit of questioning people's motives. But in this case, I feel uh, justified. Will you uh, kindly tell me why you had me sign a receipt for 300000 Well, that is because... You mean because you knew I was an imposter? And you knew it before I even signed the receipt? Mm -hmm. I knew you weren't the real Jerry the first time I saw Chloe look at you. Oh, and you continued being deceived to fool the others uh, so you could create an alibi, huh? Come on, Colonel. Tell a pal. Aren't you short in your accounts with the Warrant and the State? Well, that is, I... Yes, I owe the Warrant and the State a little less than $100,000. A little less? You stole it? No, oh, no, please, please don't say that. I, I merely borrowed it. Oh, yes, yes, that's what they all say. Hmm. And so, uh... And so, when, when Drain phoned me that Warrington had arrived suddenly, I... Well, there was only one thing to do. Go there and throw myself on his mercy. You mean to say you were really going to confess? Yes. Well, how about those two uh, men you engaged to steal those bonds? How'd you know about them? Friends of mine. Well, I, I was desperate, but I was willing to attempt anything. If all other means failed, I, I could cover my shortage. By paying Warrington uh, money realized from the sale of his own bonds, huh? Well, that is... Yes. Colonel, don't you know if those two thieves had ever put their hands on those bonds, you've never seen them again? You evidently believe in honor among thieves. I am, I am not a thief. I've had a spotless reputation for 30 years. Even now, my family don't suspect. And I've made the Warrington estate many times over the amount of which I am temporarily in default. Well, suppose you earn another 100000 and pay the Warringtons back. I will. I will. At my earliest opportunity. Colonel, I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you. Mrs. Warrington. Chloe. Yes, you see, Colonel, we're all learning to understand each other as the evening progresses. Chloe, I... I don't know what to say. Well, let's not discuss it now, Colonel. I do believe you. Thank you, my dear. And do you believe me, too? You see, I didn't have your bonds. You're real. Splendid. I don't know how I'm going to thank you. Well, perhaps if you knew me better, you could learn. Why do you engage yourself in so dangerous a uh, profession, shall I say? Well, you see, it's my only chance to meet the very best people. 
And tonight shall be the high spot of my career. I shall devote it all to you. What are you going to do? I'm going to pay an informal visit to the office of Colton Drain. Oh, please don't. You've done enough. I don't want you to risk your safety for... For what? For me. <laughs> I wanted to hear you say that. A lot of thrills of an otherwise uh, dull adventure and also settle my score with Colton Drain. But I don't want you to take that risk. It's been all my blundering, my stupidity, and I don't want you to steal from me. Or, uh, from you. Carrigan, will you see that Mrs. Warrington is safely escorted to her home? I'm using Colonel Lewis's car. He's going with me to Colton Drain's office. No, no, I, I, I protest. I refuse to assist you in the commission of a crime. Why, Colonel, I'm not asking you to assist me in crime. I'm merely asking you to help me in detection. You see, I never could understand petty larceny. Mm, Colonel. Yes. Is this what we want? It is indeed. Here are the petroleum bonds Drain had me turn over last November. And, and here are the amalgamated electric bonds. Why, the poor sap, he has them all listed here in his own handwriting. This is all we need to convict. <laughs> this explains everything, Colonel. Warrenden was killed months ago. Here's a pencil answer on the back. Body found, not Warrenden. He's in London. Signed, Colton Drain. What a clever chap this fellow Drain is. He not only knew he was killed, but he attempted to conceal the fact so it couldn't be proven. Poor Jerry. What a terrible end. You'll excuse me, but... I'm somewhat nervous. This is my first adventure in crime. Yeah, and it's my, uh... Well, one never knows. It isn't necessary for us to stay any longer, is it? No. You help me with these papers and we'll close up shop. may photograph the door for fingerprints if they become interested in our activities. That's right. It is burglary, isn't it? Yes, I believe that's what they call it. Let's get out of here before I touch something. Don't worry, Colonel. I took care of that. I allowed you to handle the cash box in the vault. Oh, dear me. a report of a stolen car, Captain. I haven't seen anybody answering that description along this road tonight, Captain. Honey, this sort of game isn't in the sparrow's line. If it was lifting a bunch of jewels or knocking off a bank, I could understand it. Well, fortunately, the other family valuables are in my private vault. Come to think of it, I did see somebody answering that description. I picked up a limousine doing about 80 going by an hour ago. And when I pulled him down with a siren, the man flashed a diamond studded badge on me and gave me his card. Who was it? Uh, Police Inspector Schmittenberg. Had a swell blonde dame with him, too. A blonde? Yeah, honey. You're sure it was the inspector with her? Well, I, I don't know him personally. Uh, what did he look like? Medium-sized man. Weight about 180. Why, Schmittenberg's six foot two and weighs almost a ton. Kerrigan and Mrs. Warrington. What road were they on? The road to Briarmore. Come on, let's get back to the house. Lucky if you don't get sent to go jail for this. Chloe. 
Oh, it's you. Forgive me for coming in this way. I had no choice but the window. I suspect the police are guarding the front of the house. The police? Yes, they're showing an unusual interest in my activities tonight. Why did you do this? Why did you come back? You're in danger here. I had to come back tonight to bring you some security stolen from your husband by Colton Drain. And also the necessary evidence to convict him. But this may mean your capture, your safety. It frightens me, Jerry. Jerry? Well, it's the only name I know you by. That of my husband. Were you really going to divorce him? Yes. I have nothing left for him now but pity. I found this in Colton Drain's private vault. The police. The real police this time. Well, good night, dear lady. Perhaps some other place, some other time. You can't go that way. You won't have a chance of escape. I have no other choice. You can't, Jerry. I won't let you. You are swell. Did they come back here? Here, sir? Who? Don't try to lie. You know what I'm talking about. But there's no one here, sir. Uh, only Mrs. Warrington. Uh, when did she get back? But she hasn't left, sir. Ah, oh, don't fool with him, Captain. I suspect he's an accomplice of the Sparrows. Come on. Johnson, cover the ground. Corbett, keep an eye on this fellow. Yes, sir. Uh, where do you think you're going? I was just going to see if the cat was out. Mini, 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 mini. Who is it? Hoy, the police are here. They want to talk to you. But just their own. We're sure to get a clue from Mrs. Warrington, Captain. Now, don't be alarmed, Chloe. We discovered the Sparrow's trick shortly after you left. Sparrow? We've been looking for you ever since. Where did he take you? How did you get away from him? Away? Away, away from whom? A crook who kidnapped you and was masquerading as your husband, ma'am. <laughs> Chloe, oh, don't you understand? Our only chance to recover those bonds is with the help of the police. Yes, and what's all the joke? Darling, would you come here a moment? Oh, yeah. <coughs> what is it, dear? Hello, what's up? Chloe! Look here, Colton. What's the row? Barging in at this hour with the gendarme. There's your man, Captain. I charge this fellow with being the sparrow. Oh, wait a minute. Almost... I say, lady, who is this man? I beg your pardon. I'd hardly be sharing my room with anyone but my husband. Yes, what do you mean? Oh, I didn't mean that. I think there's someone at the door. Well, what do you want? I'm Mr. Warrington's guest. Well, Grayson, what's happened here? He's a bobby, sir. Oh, really? So I should suppose. What do you mean, a bobby? Hello, Colonel. Captain, here's the man who can verify... Wait a minute. Who is this man? Hi, Colonel Lewis, my friend and business executive. Colonel, you know this man is a crook and an imposter. Don't shout at me, Drain. What's this all about, Jerry? Can you identify this man also? Jerry Warrington? Why, of course. Don't be ridiculous. But I tell you, Captain... Say, me... what have you been trying to do? Kid me? Uh, I think I understand, Captain. Uh, would you allow me to speak uh, to these two gentlemen privately? Certainly. Speak to whoever you like, Mr. Warrenden. But somebody's going to talk a lot to me before I leave this house. Yes, Colonel. Thank you. 
Captain, I insist. Uh, Colton. I... Uh, come. Excuse me, Captain. Do you suppose that you can get away with this, you cheap crook? I resent the word cheap. Now listen, Drane, we may as well understand each other. I paid a visit to your vault tonight without your permission. And I got enough evidence on you to send you to the big house the rest of your useless life. Don't try to bluff me. Bluff? Here's a cable concerning Warren's death. You know what I got that, don't you? Well, that doesn't incriminate me. Yes, but the evidence that Mrs. Warrington has will. However, your own stupidity defeated your blundering efforts at crime. For you, Colonel. Well, we won't go into your case. You'll at least come clean. On my word of honor. Hmm? As a gentleman. Oh. Thanks, but I can't use it. As for myself, well, I admit we're all in the same boat. We're birds of a feather. But in this case, I had no choice as to my plumage. Colonel, will you please ask the uh, captain to step in? Certainly. Now, Drain, to save yourself further embarrassment, I advise you to use this one-way ticket to South America, which I also found in your vault. Well, I, uh, I always did want to see South America. Well, stay a long time and see plenty of it. Oh, Captain, do you know it was all my fault? I didn't realize how hard my poor secretary had been uh, working for my interests. Why, the poor fellow's had a nervous breakdown. He's uh, suffering from hallucinations. However, he's taking a long vacation in South America. Maybe you better take it in the insane asylum. I'll suggest it to him. Oh, uh, Captain, would you like to have, or could I get you? <coughs> well, I don't mind, thank you. I'll say that you get it. And, you know, Colton, you should contribute generously to the police charity fund for having caused the captain uh, so much trouble tonight. Well, of course. I've been robbed. Uh, you better take that rest, young fellow. Big problem. Is this the end of the engagement? No, Grace, not quite. We haven't reached the final curtain. Oh, Mrs. Wellington asked me to tell you, sir, that she's in the drawing room. Oh, is she? I hope it will be a happy ending, sir. Thanks, Grayson. Feeling better, dear? Is your headache all gone? Where's your might answer me? Yes, it's all gone. And souls are a delightful little adventure. It was delightful while it lasted. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it brought back the sparrow. I had hoped I had finished with him forever. What will you do now? Oh, go away somewhere, someplace, where he isn't known. Europe, perhaps. But why? Why what? Why go away? Well, what would you do if you were in my place? Stay here and protect and care for someone who really needs you. Dear, will you rub my head? I'm sure all my troubles will vanish completely. Oh, that's marvelous. <laughs>